<laughs> that would be me. Yep, Butterfingers. Hey everyone, how's it going? Noxidar here, and welcome to the next reaction in Delicious in Dungeon, Episode 5. I've really enjoyed the series so far. I love just being able to see all the delicious foods that are just like so vibrant, so beautiful. But the thing that really kind of caught me by surprise is the beautiful messaging that we're getting inside of these episodes too. Really kind of just like meaningful moral lessons that kind of get, I don't know, maybe pushed to the side, muted, desaturated, or not as pronounced inside of Western media. It's been absolutely refreshing between like One Piece and uh, this show to just be able to to get stories like that 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 just really resonate, you know, inside. And uh, yeah, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to our next reaction. All right, this place is looking lively. Oh my gosh, that looks good. This is so good. That's what I said. Real good. Worst thing about the dungeon, not being able to eat this good when we're in it. Let's savor it while we can. They don't have a senshi, that's why. Dealing with food is a bigger pain than the monsters the deeper down we go. Mm. A week's worth of food is heavy. Some people stay in for a month. How do they do it? Well, McBell, what they do is they kill the parties they need and feast on their flesh! Ah! <laughs> It'd be way easier to hunt monsters for food than other parties. You are what folks call a wet blanket. At least he's having fun as party leader, right? Some say the monsters are getting more aggressive. Is that thing going to pop up and get her? Is it going to snack on her? All right, so this may sound a little weird, but I do have on some level kinemortophobia, the fear of the walking dead. And I've like thought about it. And I'm not really sure why. Like, don't get me wrong. It's fun playing games where you're, like, slaughtering hordes of zombies and stuff. But on the same level, like, in a survival horror aspect, like, when they're just slowly getting into my face. So, when I first played Dying Light, I used to run rooftop to rooftop. And I would only use throwing stars. And so, I would just constantly try to get the crafting materials for throwing stars because I was absolutely averse to having any zombie come within my personal space. <laughs> I was social distancing way before social distancing. Granted, it was with ninja stars. What I'm really trying to get at is I cannot tell you how anxious it makes me when someone's just like kneeling over a dead corpse, even if it's a corpse that's been twice killed over. I don't trust it, man. <laughs> I don't trust it. Look at this. I got it off the zombie. Oh. Let's open it. No way. Golden jewels. We hit Ooh. the jackpot. I can't believe it. That's pretty nice. Guys, how about we all head back to town for some dinner? Does that sound good? Yeah. Where is our party at? Huh? Oh, there they are. Oh. Hey, it's Chill Chuck. These guys got wiped out big time. I don't see any wounds on them. Maybe a ghost killed him. Weird. I'm sure the corpse retrievers will find them soon, but I'll cast a spell so they don't turn into zombies. For my sake, thank you. <laughs> what do you want to mm. do about all this treasure? Let's pile it up and leave it for him. <laughs> what? Are you okay back there? Yeah, sure am. Why'd my sword twitch? Uh, hey, let go of my hand. I totally forgot he had the away. living sword. What do you want? Hurry. Draw me. I can feel it telling me there's danger. Oh, what the heck? Oh, it's like cursed Egyptian treasure. Marcel, get away from there. <laughs> Interesting. Obviously not Egyptian, but like, you know, in that same vein. Oh, wait a minute. No, they're just bugs. Bees killed them. Never seen one up close like this before. I can't tell the difference from real treasure. But a minute ago, you could huh? tell. He's right. You even drew your sword. Oh, um, I thought I saw one of them move. I think it's interesting that he has a living sword that is whether by way of like its own self-preservation or some sort of like protectorate attitude 
uh, has given him like an advance warning that, hey, there's danger here. I find it kind of interesting, especially given the fact that Laios pretty much killed and cooked all of their brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, and what have you. Man, they have a really complicated relationship. <laughs> Liar. The critter in my sword sensed him. Mm. It's calm now, so that's gotta be it. Is it just me, or is it getting weirder? Yeah, he definitely is. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Yum. You have got, got to be Yum. kidding me. Do they taste any good? Oh, I'll say they do. Bugs got all the nutrients a body needs. How can you tell which are or aren't edible? Mm, it depends. For example, this one's easy. If you look between the beads, you can see its teeny legs. With brooches and coins, you check the backside. I think it's neat how the male and female coin bugs have different faces. With rings, if they're flexible, they're a bug. Tiaras need to be put in water to tell for sure. Bugs are light, so if it floats, you got yourself bugs. For the tiara, pop out the eggs and larvae from their nest. Rick it up in the pot and boil oh. everything together. That reminds me of like that, uh, those old like internet videos where people would put like everyday house items uh, in front of you and then all of a sudden they would just cut it and it turned out that it was actually cake all along. I love Senshi's character. Senshi's character is so interesting because he kind of takes on this kind of fatherly aspect, like a mentor of sorts. He's always just freely willing to teach. He has this incredible repository of knowledge and wisdom he's so efficient and and tactful he's kind of i feel like he's really our guide to not just the culinary world of delicious and dungeon but also the active ingredients to the creativity of the show itself i can't help but feel and maybe this is because i'm also a writer and a storyteller myself but the thing to keep in mind is that it's not just Senshi that's really giving these ideas and giving life to this creativity. This is really coming from the mind and machinations of the author themselves, Ryoko Kui. So I just absolutely love the way that she has just kind of channeled her creativity, not just in like every aspect of this fantastical world, but the way in which she kind of uses a character, almost like a conduit for that creativity to relay it back to us, the audience. It's never like this exposition and this big narrative breakdown to explain the world to us. It's, it's, it's quite, we're quite literally learning in the actual sense of this is something that all of these characters, if they pay attention to, they can appreciate, they can glean knowledge from, they can learn from, and by proxy, we, the audience, are also being able to take in that knowledge of how things can be done in this world. And it's this very interesting, evocative way of, of seeing a world. It's so unique among any of the other styles of storytelling that I've, you know, been influenced by in my short stay on this little rock we call Earth. But yeah, basically what I'm getting at is I love, I love Senshi. I love, and I love the function that he has within the party and the kind of like role that he fulfills for this party as well it's just so much fun to watch him break things down and then not only that he he doesn't just break it down he puts it back together again and we get to see like the final product and it, it's like this beautiful delicious looking culinary cuisine it it truly just amazing i can't give this enough praise it's one of the things i appreciate most about this show spoon it into a jar and it's ready. That looks so good. <laughs> I mean, that jar looked like it was filled with something that Lisa Frank would have came up with in the 90s, but be that as it may, it looks really good. Folks up top can try raising them, but they just don't taste the same. Interesting. The free range monsters and bugs. <laughs> <laughs> 
We know by now, Marcel. You're gonna love it. Dear Lord, it's creamy. They use mimicry to hide from their enemies, just like you, sword critter. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Hmm. Ooh, did not like that. That's nothing. It was trying to warn me. I think it thinks we're a team now. That's interesting. Oh, I have to give you a name. <laughs> What are we supposed to do with the ones you said we can't eat? Toss them if you want. You break your teeth. You can't eat real treasure. You break your teeth. You <laughs> real, treasure. real treasure. Why didn't you see that before? From now on, your name's Kensuke. Oh, that's a good name for a sword. Yeah, I believe Ken is already the Japanese word for sword, so. A little on the nose, but okay. You're eating another one of those things? We got a lot of leftovers. Honestly, this isn't a picnic. <gasps> Great, the temperature dropped. All those shimmery blobs. Yeah, those are ghosts gathering. Go, before they see us. Ghosts? They're drawn to the corpses we just left behind. Blast them with a spell and... That's right. Fallon's not here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. Yep, Butterfingers. Whoa, that looks awesome. Ooh, Dentine Ice. Remember those commercials? My ears. Hurry, get up. Lift Gaunt, Badenbaum. There. That's all there is to it. Those pesky ghosts can't harm you now. That What's guy's this? on the missing adventurer list, all right. I see. Okay, I'll take care of him. First, I'll knock him. <laughs> I'll do it. This can be handled without violence. No! Fallon, wait! Oh, I just needed a hug? Be at peace. And leave this body. Fallon! That's actually pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Fallon was amazing. I mean, is. I really like how, even though, as an audience, we've only been introduced to Fallon for, like, a mat matter of minutes moments at best and yet the theme in this episode of showing how even though the party is working kind of cohesively right like they sidestepped the tragedy that befell the last party with the bug treasure and the mimicry and all of that but to also show how even though they're you know moving through the dungeon competently their party in essence is still kind of not whole not complete we really can feel the missing presence of fallon and f and finally like learning and getting a, a sample of what the party would be like with her presence with these flashbacks and i think i think that's really cool um you know it, it, she's kind of like the main thrust for going on this mission or journey adventure whatever <laughs> quest what have you so to see some inclusion with her and and to see her kind of be present in spirit kind of ironic right fighting ghosts but I, I think that does a lot to to serve the storytelling here yeah i enjoy that i'll give them all a gentle embrace oh boy a gentle embrace of explosions no oh. gentle no. <laughs> no wait you have holy water nope gotta make some do you leave it to senshi to like macgyver his way out of this situation there's all kinds of custom in the world to get rid of evil stuff. Fire is one of them. It keeps the dark back. All through history, yeah. folks have used it as a sacred symbol and a holy ward to keep that evil the hell away from you. Ooze is holy too. It's used as an offering to the gods and to purify True. whatever it is that needs purifying. Then there's salt. Traditions going way back say it protects against evil. And since sugar looks the same, I'll add some of that. <laughs> and we're just You're making this up as you go. That's what I was gonna say. Not we're just making it up. Some herbs. The holy water's ready. I'm not gonna lie. This looks like some kind of arts and crafts that was put together by <laughs> younger kids. Where, where like they take like um, they take like hand sanitizer and water and something else, and they pour a bunch of glitter in like a water bottle <laughs> with like some extra floaty shiny bits. And that is exactly what that looks like. But again, going back to like how I talked about. Uh, Senshi earlier right there is a perfect example of how he kind of touches on things that would be familiar to us kind of playing into not only 
our own rich history, but also the rich history of this world as it's presented, while then throwing in and making an impromptu concoction for holy water while taking ingredients that uh, we've seen through all the previous episodes, uh, things that have been kept from like the slime guts and stuff. It's just fantastic how everything, like a good recipe, all these ingredients get mixed together and we just create something new. And it's just a sort of creative geniusness that I I do think you you only really arrive at when you when you limit your parameters and you expand your understanding of what you've limited yourself to. So what I mean by that is channeling creativity through the lens of kind of like culinary art makes everything so much richer and unique and expands beyond our, even our own, you know, understandings and what truly makes things fantastical. Something that I'm learning here, even in my late thirties is that less is more when it comes to storytelling. Sometimes the things that feel like really generic kind of fantasy is because I think they that the the writers and storytellers are working in parameters where anything is possible and so nothing becomes possible at the same time nothing feels truly extraordinary because everything to begin with was allowed to be ordinary then you juxtapose that to what's going on in delicious and dungeon and it's just it's just creative <laughs> out the wazoo but again you'll notice it really comes channeled through that uh through that limited lens of of cooking and culinary design and art <laughs> and uh man i just i can't help but appreciate it it has me looking forward to to the next episode this is so much fun here they come just gotta make sure the lid's tight on the holy water <laughs> we're gonna die here oh no felon i'm alive because of you. If only the dragon ate me instead, our friends wouldn't be in this mess. Forgive me. Oh, what? Uh. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't remember that. <laughs> Yo, Legend of Zelda vibes. <laughs> Holy water works, even in a jar. I couldn't get over the fact that we don't have her help. And thinking about how easy things would be if we did. But the reality is, she's not here. Until she's back, we gotta help ourselves. It's a good lesson. Senshi! Hmm? Let me take a crack at him! He's getting all ice, though. It's over. The jar's got frost on it. Using holy water like that's more efficient than spraying it all over. That figures. Ghosts can pass through the jar so the water hits them. Dude, that's so clever. It's sorbet. Ectoplasm freezing a joke. Is it safe what? to eat something with ghost funk all over it? <laughs> exactly. I'm worried about how much sugar I've had today. That's a fair point. Yeah, I worry about that too sometimes. It's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's right. It's good. It's so light and refreshing too. Instead of getting cursed by ghosts, we got blessed. You said it. That's an interesting perspective. We're so lucky. If Fallon didn't get eaten, we wouldn't be having sorbet now. Huh? <laughs> You're joking, right? You know, some things are better to keep to yourself. True. It's good fatherly advice there, Senshi. Thank you. That kind of caught me off guard. I'm so used to seeing or listening to the storyteller and narrator tell us delicious in dungeon. My goodness. So I think I really spoke a lot about how I felt about this episode for the most part so i'm not gonna go too crazy with our recap here but the party was definitely feeling the absence of fallon absolutely 100 percent then right there at the end this goes back to exactly what i was talking about by limiting the parameters at which the creativity flows there ends up being a more expansive and creative and unique expression within those parameters that actually feels expansive. It seems like it would be counterintuitive, but it's something that I'm really like learning to explore for myself in my own creative endeavors. 
we MacGyvered holy water while explaining, you know, why it was important through different cultures and uh, things from the surface world, while then also using it to ward off evil, not by splashing them with it, but by tying a rope to it. And that ends up being a form of food prep and creating their dessert that they just had after their meal. Again, through that limited lens, we have such an expansive material. The comedic chops were all there. You know, I talked about how like in the last episode, there was such a, you know, a meaningful message. And I think that this was actually kind of a nice little reprieve from that. Because you don't want that to necessarily hit every single episode. And, but I do think that there is some interesting philosophies going on there. You know, like looking at a bad thing and actually seeing the good that can come from it. And that was kind of one of the things they were lightly touching on there at the end. What an amazing show. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably say that every every single reaction as long as it keeps bringing such fresh inventive and creative ways uh to get me excited about the next culinary curiosity and the next meaningful message that's all the time we have for today i hope you enjoyed this reaction and i'll see you in the next one this is noxidar out we'll see ya